your team. What's your code name again? The boys. Oof. Who came up with that shit? If the outrageous herogasm of the boys has taught us anything, it's that there's no high without a come down. Someone please help. Season three of the Prime Video series was a masterclass in political satire filtered through the lens of scandalous soup shenanigans, its excellence carrying over to the freshman year of its fantastic collegiate spinoff, Gen V. After so much f***ing around, season four ushers in a time of finding out, sometimes too much finding out, as showrunner Eric Kripke and the team pack storylines like sardines into the tin can of these eight episodes. The unresolved issues of the boys have backed Kripke into a corner, now intensified by Gen V's big reveal, a virus that threatens the lives of Vault International's crew of cape and mask wearing not-so-do-gooders. Season 4 presents soup-hunting vigilante Billy Butcher and his stars and stripes clad nemesis Homelander with the realization of their ultimate goals. But both men are uncharacteristically pensive and exhausted with possible victory on the horizon. Urban effectively showcases a squishier, compassionate side to Butcher, who hacks near-death coughs due to a throbbing temp V-induced tumor in his brain. Star stays on task as Homelander continues fear-mongering his way to the top of Vaught and, well, the world. But he frequently gets caught gazing into nothingness, overwhelmed by what happens next. There's no backpedaling from their rivalry when Butcher's days are numbered, but the mutually assured destruction of their conflict weighs heavier than ever. So does the boys' lack of political subtlety. Nothing bad's gonna happen, right? Oh, it seems it already has. Season four triples down on corruption that feels uncomfortably familiar during a real-world election year. Homelander's ascension as a superhuman dictator directly references January 6th, insurrectionists, and dissident lists with a warranted urgency. The Boys has never been quiet about who the show's big bad is, and Kripke has no choice but to state the obvious about Homelander's MAGA tactics, which he does without sacrificing the show's values. They just unfortunately fit too well. The threat Homelander poses to the United States has to be spelled out in massive, easy-to-read letters because some viewers still can't accept that he's a villain. And it's more important than ever that we make sure the boys' messaging is crystal bloody clear. Season 4 is encased within a black box of gloom, manipulation, and despair. Butcher's terminal diagnosis keeps him more docile. M.M. steps in as commander of the boys, but he's plagued with his own anxiety flare-ups. Homelander pursues the purification of a soup first nation, but finds his mind clouded by fatherhood duties and abusive childhood memories now that Ryan is living in Fought Tower. Frenchie dreams of happiness but only finds pain, Annie January flees from her alter ego Starlight because of what she's responsible for, and Huey's mercilessly tested. This isn't another high energy season. It's a result of the story's trajectory, and while there are plenty of worthwhile arcs seen to a fulfilling completion, the melancholy can become suffocating. Newcomers to the Seven provide some reprieve. Firecracker presents herself as a hybrid of Alex Jones, X-Men's Jubilee, and Stormfront, a Homelander sycophant who moans about Antifa and peddles anti-Semitic conspiracies for biased media outlets. She casts a deliciously hateable aura. So pretty and perfect. Sister Sage is far more interesting, literally the smartest person in the world. She challenges Homelander's patience by always telling him the unvarnished truth, even when he's wrong. You are clearly punishing me for openly disagreeing with you, which you said you could handle, but clearly you can't. Firecracker feels more like a prop in her navy blue camo outfit, whereas Sister Sage's amusing commentary on Homelander's god complex is one critical comment away from an eye laser lobotomy, which makes for a much more intriguing relationship. Vought's new recruits fill their roles with varying degrees of success, but both are welcome additions. Things are a little more mixed for the boys' ongoing storylines, given the decelerated pacing of Season 4. Frenchie and Kimiko keep their will-they-won't-they they chemistry afloat, but it's in danger of running out of steam. Victoria Newman's entanglement in Robert Singer's presidential campaign points towards Vault complicity, but that plot is growing weary too. The Deep continues his sucky journey through self-discovery, cycling through repetitive motions as he once again lets someone else dictate his worth. That's not to say any of these parts are poorly performed, a talented cast still makes the most of the absurd caricatures they're playing, but more a commentary on how season 4 rehashes dilemmas that have existed since the series began. Thankfully, none of this has any impact on the number of action sequences in season 4. Kripke and company come up with a few customary what the f moments, bloodthirsty compound v-fueled livestock run amok, and a heavy metal version of Hava Nagila soundtracks a fight that features a whole lot of dong. It just wouldn't be the boys without extreme violence and senseless nudity. And while that shock value isn't as intense this season, that signature flagrant charm is still present. There's something so cathartic about watching Annie pummel the deep unconscious, or following Kimiko on a revenge mission in Shining Light territory. The boys doesn't lose its step, it just dials down the tempo. Just don't expect much from a limp noodle of a finale, which plays more like a stretched out advertisement for season 5 than a memorable or impactful payoff. 
How season four culminates is psychologically diabolical, but it pales in comparison to past season ending highlights like Starlight, Queen Maeve, and Kimiko teaming up to knock the snot out of Stormfront in season two. Prepare accordingly. This finale goes out on a quiet exhale rather than a thunderous war cry. That doesn't sound good, Ashley. Oh yeah, no shit, Ashley. Sorry, Ashley. The Boys Season 4 is a solid crash back to Earth for Prime Video's anti-superhero satire. With so much ground to cover, both ongoing storylines and new plot lines, Season 4 could have benefited from being a couple episodes longer. Everyone in Butcher's crew is dealing with some messed up issues, while Homelander's co-conspirators tiptoe around Vought Tower, trying to keep their bodies in one piece. Season 4 feels like a fuse slowly fizzling towards the last episode, but the fireworks it ignites are relatively dinky compared to what the boys has done in the past. Maybe that sounds harsher than it should, because there's still plenty of what I love about the boys packed into a season scarred by sorrow, heartbreak, and so much angst. It's just hard to be as excited about Season 4 after the back-to-back -back bangers of Season 3 and Gen V Season 1. That's a spirit champ. Who wants a creamy, delicious milkshake? For more on the boys, check out the exclusive clip we debuted at IGN Live. And for everything else, stick with IGN. You're all fucking welcome.